Through Tim's and Pearl's, IA provides countries with data about their long-term trends and educational achievement. This enables countries to make informed decisions about strategies for educational improvement. Tim's and Pearl's are designed to measure trends in achievement and to show growth or decline over time. Tim's has assessed mathematics and science at the fourth and eighth grades every four years since 1995, and Pearl's has assessed reading at the fourth grade every five years since 2001. As a result, many countries and benchmarking participants have comparable data from previous assessments that allow them to monitor system-level trends in a global context. At the fourth grade, looking at achievement trends over time, there have been more increases than decreases in overall mathematics, science, and reading achievement and at the international benchmarks. This is encouraging because a number of countries have been working hard to improve their educational achievement by raising standards for teacher certification, for example, or by increasing the number of years of schooling. In comparison, at the eighth grade, there was more balance between achievement growth and decline, particularly in mathematics. In TIMS at the fourth grade, 17 countries have data measuring trends in mathematics and science achievement over the 16-year period from 1995 to 2011. Since 1995, 12 of these countries have raised their levels of average mathematics achievement. Australia, England, Hong Kong, Iran, Japan, Korea, New Zealand, Norway, Portugal, Singapore, Slovenia, and the United States. Only three countries had decreases in mathematics since 1995. Remarkably, nine countries have been able to improve at all four international benchmarks since 1995, including Australia, England, Hong Kong, Iran, Japan, Korea, Portugal, Slovenia, and the United States. Since 1995, eight countries have raised their levels of science achievement. Hong Kong, Hungary, Iran, Japan, Korea, Portugal, Singapore, and Slovenia. Just one country showed a decrease in science achievement. Six countries improved at all four international benchmarks during this same period. Hong Kong, Iran, Korea, Portugal, Singapore, and Slovenia. Over the 10 years of Pearl's assessments, 21 countries have comparable data measuring trends in reading achievement. From 2001 to 2011, 10 countries raised their reading achievement. Colombia, the Czech Republic, Hong Kong, Iran, Norway, the Russian Federation, Singapore, the Slovak Republic, Slovenia, and the United States. Only four countries showed declines over the past decade. In reading, there were also more improvements across the international benchmarks than declines. Six countries showed increases at all four benchmarks. Hong Kong, Iran, the Russian Federation, Singapore, Slovenia, and the United States. At the eighth grade in TIMS, 25 countries have trend data spanning from 1995 or 1999 to 2011. Of these 25 countries, nine had increases in mathematics achievement. Chile, Chinese Taipei, Hong Kong, Italy, Korea, Lithuania, the Russian Federation, Slovenia, and the United States. During this same period, however, 11 countries had decreases in mathematics achievement at the eighth grade. In addition, just three countries improved at all four international benchmarks, Korea, Lithuania, and the United States. In science, 11 countries had increases from 1995 or 1999 to 2011. Chile, Hong Kong, Iran, Japan, Korea, Lithuania, the Russian Federation, Singapore, Slovenia, Tunisia, and the United States. Six countries had decreases in achievement during this period. Similar to mathematics at the eighth grade, just three countries improved at all four international benchmarks since 1995. Korea, Lithuania, and Slovenia. It's very impressive that so many countries have been able to improve student performance since 1995. It's all the more impressive that some countries have managed to raise achievement at all four international benchmarks, for the lowest as well as the highest performing students. Hong Kong is a country that has shown net gains in student achievement in mathematics and science in both grades since 1995, while also dramatically increasing reading achievement since 2001. 
Professor Frederick Ling of Hong Kong University reflected on the educational policies and practices in Hong Kong for increasing mathematics, science, and literacy excellence. The ministry in Hong Kong, of course, they're very happy with the results, and um, they always point to the significant curriculum changes in the past decade uh, or so as an explanation of this um, good test score. For example, in language education, um, we, we have a major revamp of the curriculum in the past decade or so. The teaching approach is quite different from what it used to be. I think it turns um, learners' attention more to really the language and, and to the literature appreciation. And also in science, there's, um, I think, about two decades or around that time ago, there's also a change in the whole approach in uh, studying science. Curriculum change is such that there are more experiments, for example, and more investigative. There are also some changes in math, but there's not as significant changes as the language and science curricula. But actually, what I wanted to say is that I think this picture is actually more complicated than that. For example, the cultural values in Hong Kong, I think it plays a very strong role in terms of uh, encouraging students to achieve. So that may be another factor. So I think we have to be more comprehensive when we try to locate factors in explanation of student achievement and not just simplistically point to one thing, for example, curriculum change as the, the only cause for student achievement. Similar to Hong Kong, the Russian Federation has also been able to raise student performance over the past decade in reading, mathematics, and science. Here now to discuss educational policies and practices for increasing excellence in Russian education is Galina Kovalyeva, head of department for general education quality assessment at the Institute of Content and Teaching Methods Russian Academy of Education. The Russian results may be explained by the very similar factors which uh, take place in other countries. And they include state support on education, more resources, more contribution, more expenses, then special national projects directed on modernization of the system, structure resources, teacher training, Special projects on gifted children, special projects on supporting good practices, best schools, and supporting the weak schools. Then more autonomy to the schools in making decisions in the area of instructions and using resources. Then introduction of the new educational standards orientated on uh, the new results in subject, metacognitive, and personal area. Then transformation of the primary school system to four-year schooling. So one year was added. Then more intensive preparation in the primary, pre-primary education. More support or effort from the parents. And for introduction of the reading literacy assessment in the primary school related to, to pupils, good uh, models in the grade eight. Introduction in the new curriculum, in the new standards, new interdisciplinary program on reading and working with the information. Introduction of the external national examination in grade 11 and 9 with the compulsory mathematics uh, orientated on algebra and new topics in the national curriculum for mathematics, probability and statistics. And at the end, I'd like to emphasize that the children which participated in teams 11 in grade 8 were the children which have, in 2006, very high results in reading. So children which were more prepared to successfully study in the secondary school. The United States is one of the few countries to have raised both mathematics and reading achievement across all four international benchmarks. Here to consider the nation's progress in improving its students' performance in these critical subjects is Jack Buckley, Commissioner of the National Center for Education Statistics in the United States Department of Education. In fourth grade reading in Pearls, the U.S. average score rose 16 points between 2006 and 2011, from 540 to 556. That's well over a tenth of a standard deviation over a five-year period. And if we look at the international benchmarks, in 2006, the U.S. had 47% of our fourth graders reaching the high benchmark, 
and 12% at advanced, while in 2011 we had 56% of fourth graders, more than half, reaching the high benchmark, and 17% at advanced. Among the nations that participated, only Singapore had a statistically higher percentage of advanced fourth graders reading in 2011. So we think our PEARLS results reflect some real improvement in elementary reading, although there's clearly still plenty of room to grow. In mathematics and science, Tim shows us only one measurable increase in average scores across either subject or grade since the last assessment, again at grade four, where our average mathematics scores went from 529 in 2007 to 541 in 2011, an increase of 12 points. Again, this is about a tenth of a standard deviation gain over a four-year period. This roughly parallels the trajectory that we have observed for grade four mathematics on our own national assessment of educational progress, although the relative magnitude of the growth is greater on TIMS. In terms of the international benchmarks, the U.S. had 40% of fourth graders reaching the high benchmark and 10% the advanced in grade four math in 2007. While in 2011, these grew to 47% at the high benchmark and 13% reaching the advanced. However, we did not see measurable gains in science at 4th or 8th grade or in mathematics at 8th grade. The U.S. average did remain above the TIM scale average in both subjects and at both grade levels, though. I'd also like to note that the United States had a number of our individual states participating independently in PEARLS and TIMS. I won't go into their results in detail here, but PEARLS and TIMS confirm something that we know from our own national assessment, that there's considerable variation in performance among our states. But the PEARLS and TIMS reports show us this in an international context, and we're able to see that some of the U.S. states rank among the top education systems in the world, while some clearly do not. This sort of international benchmarking is of great interest to our policymakers and the public, and we appreciate the opportunity PEARLS and TIMS are giving U.S. states to make these kinds of comparisons. This concludes the presentation of the trends in TIMS and PEARLS achievement. The other three presentations address the 2011 TIMS and PEARLS achievement results the importance of an early start in education, and school factors for academic success.